continue our discussion of Bodhi diagrams, students should be reading chapter eight of the course notes to supplement to the, today's lecture. At the conclusion of this lecture, students should be able to determine the steady state response from a Bodhi diagram and derive the transfer function for a system given the Bodhi diagram. In our last lecture, we looked at five terms to use to create Bodhi diagrams, including static gain, poles at the origin, zeros at the origin, simple poles and simple zeros. And we also discussed what you do when you have a multiplicity greater than one for any of these terms. Today we will discuss how to create a Bode diagram when you have complex conjugate poles and zeros, but because it is so complicated, we won't actually create one. When you have complex conjugate poles and zeros, they will have the form 20 log base 10 of the quantity one minus omega over omega n squared that term squared plus two zeta omega n over omega n squared raised to some power of n. It's a complex conjugate, zero at the pole or the origin. To see what the transfer function would look like, it would be h of s is equal to k over s squared plus two zeta omega n s plus omega n squared raised to some n. In order to get the static gain, k naught, you would then factor out that complex conjugate term and then what the magnitude plot looks like is it's approximately zero at zero decibels and at omega equal to omega n, depending upon the zeta, you will see it'll either have a spike or it may be more flat. And then as omega approaches infinity, the slope will be 40 n decibels per decade. For the phase, you would have omega is equal to omega n divided by 10 at zero degrees or omega n is equal to omega n with a slope of n 45 degrees per decade and omega is equal to 10 omega n for n 180 degrees. Let's look at some examples of some complex conjugate poles and zero Bode plots. Here's an example of the Bode magnitude plot for a complex conjugate pole. And what you should see here is that it is a flat line with a static gain at 20 decibels until it gets to the pole and then it starts to drop off with a slope of 20 decibels per decade. But now at that pole or that corner frequency, what you will see is that there will be some spike based upon the value of zeta. Now here we have an example of a phase plot for a complex conjugate pole. And what you should see here is that it goes from zero degrees to negative 180 degrees, but it depends on how it moves from one degree to the next based upon zeta. So the higher zeta is, the more flat that slope was going to be, or the lower zeta is, there's more of a corner turn before it goes to the final value. Now we will look at some examples of using some second order Bode plots, magnitude and phase plots in order to determine the sinusoidal steady state frequency response of a system. So for the system described by the following circuit, we have already created the amplitude plot and the phase plot, and we want to find V naught of T in the steady state for the following inputs. Our first input is VI of T is equal to 100 cosine 40 T. So this means that omega naught is equal to 40 radians per second for this first term. Then for B, we're going to have VI of T equals 2.5 cosine 70 T minus 70 degrees, which means that would be omega naught equal to 70 radians per second. And the third term, VI of T is equal to 65 cosine 300 T plus 15 degrees which means that omega naught is equal to 300 radians per second. So now let's look at the Bode plots and determine the information we need to answer the question. The first thing we're going to do is to mark 40, 70, and 300 on our plot so that we can get the information we need. So first, here we have 10, 20, 30. So here's 40, 50, 60, 70. And here we have 100, 200, and 300. And now we mark the points on our phase plot that we will use. And then we mark the points on our magnitude plot that we're going to use. So here's 40, 50, 60, and here's the 70. This is 100, 200, and 300. And when we approximate these values, we find that at 40 radians per second, we will say that the magnitude is about eight decibels or the static gain K naught, K naught would be equal to 10 raised to the eight over 20. So K naught is equal to 
0.51. At 40 radians per second, we estimate the phase angle as negative 45 degrees. For 70 radians per second, we say that we have zero decibels. So K naught would be equal to 10 raised to the zero. So K naught would be equal to one. And the phase angle at 70 radians per second is approximately negative 150 degrees. Finally, at 300 radians per second, we'll say that we have negative 30 decibels. So K naught is equal to negative 30 over 20. So K naught is equal to 0 0.0316. And the phase angle is equal to approximately negative 175 degrees. Now let's use these values to find the sinusoidal steady state output. So here are the values we get for omega naught is equal to 40 radians per second. Recall that our input VI of J40 is equal to 100 with an angle of zero degrees. And our transfer function H of J40 is equal to 2.51 with an angle of negative 45 degrees. So the output VI, VO of J40 would be equal to 100 times 2.51 with an angle of negative 45 degrees or 251 with an angle of negative 45 degrees. So the sinusoidal steady state V naught of T would be 251 cosine of 40T minus 45 degrees and the units are volts. Now what about omega naught equals 70 radians per second? VI of J70 is equal to 2.5 with an angle of negative 60 degrees. H of J70 is equal to one with an angle of negative 150 degrees. So V out of J70 would be equal to 2.5 with an angle of negative 210 degrees. So V naught of T would be 2.5 cosine of 70 T minus 210 degrees and the units are volts. And finally, omega naught equals 300 radians per second. VI of J 300 is equal to 65 with an angle of 15 degrees. H of J300 is equal to 0 0.0316 with an angle of negative 175 degrees. So VO of J300 is going to be 65 times 0 0.0316 with an angle of 100, with an angle of 15 minus negative 175 degrees. Which equals 2.054 with an angle of 190 degrees. And finally, V naught of T is equal to 2.054 cosine of 300 T plus 190 degrees and the units are volts. For the system described by the following circuit, use the Bode plot to predict the amplitude of V naught of T in the steady state for the following inputs. Once again, we will use the amplitude and the phase plot in order to determine the steady state for the following inputs. The first one is VI of T is equal to 10 cosine 10 T plus 60 degrees. So this would be omega naught is equal to 10 radians per second. And the phaser VI of J omega would be equal to 10 with an angle of 60 degrees. For B, we have VI of T is equal to five cosine two T minus 45 degrees. So omega naught is equal to two radians per second. And in the frequency domain, VI of J omega would be equal to five with an angle of negative 45 degrees. And letter C, VI of T is equal to two cosine 150 T plus 25 degrees. So omega naught is equal to 150 radians per second. And VI of J omega is equal to two with an angle of 25 degrees. 
So now let's use the Bode magnitude and phase plot to find values at 10, 2, and 150 radians per second. Here we have omega naught equals 10 radians per second, and here is going to be the phase value, and here we'll have the magnitude value. So we estimate the magnitude value as 9 decibels. So K naught would be equal to 10 raised to the 9 over 20. So K naught is equal to 2.82. We estimate the phase angle to be negative 67.5 degrees. Then let's look at 2 radians per second. 2 radians per second would be right here. So here would be the phase angle, and here would be the amplitude. So at two radians per second, we have zero decibels, or K naught is equal to 10 to the zero, which is equal to one. And for the phase angle, we estimate zero degrees. And finally, we do 150 radians per second. So 150 radians per second would be approximately right here. So we would say for 150 radians per second, we're going to be at negative 30 decibels. So K naught is equal to 10 to the negative 30 over 20. So K naught is equal to 0 0.0316. And the phase angle would be negative 100 degrees. So now let's find the sinusoidal steady state values. We'll do omega naught equals 10 radians per second first. And we have here that VI of J10 is equal to 10 with an angle of 60 degrees. H of J10 is equal to 2.82 with an angle of negative 67.5 degrees. So VO of J10 is equal to the product of 10 and 28.2, 2.82, which is 28.2, and the angle 60 minus 67.5 is negative 7.5 degrees. So the sinusoidal steady state, V naught of T, is equal to 28.2, the cosine of 10T minus 7.5 degrees, and the units are volts. So now let's do omega naught equals two radians per second. VI of J2 is equal to five with an angle of negative 45 degrees. H of J2 is equal to one with an angle of zero degrees. So V naught of J2 is equal to five with an angle of negative 45 degrees. So in this case, VI of T is the same as VO of T and VO of T is equal to five cosine of two T minus 45 degrees. Finally, omega naught is equal to 150 radians per second. VI of J150 is equal to two with an angle of 25 degrees. H of J150 is equal to 0 0.0316 with an angle of negative 100 degrees. So VO of J150 is equal to 0 0.06 with an angle of negative 75 degrees. And the sinusoidal steady state, V naught of T is equal to 0 0.06 cosine of 150T minus 75 degrees and the units are volts. Now let's try in-class activity three. For the following Bode amplitude plot, compute the transfer function H of S in the form k times s plus z1 times s plus z2 and so on, divided by s plus p1 times s plus p2 and so on. So here we have a Bode amplitude plot that starts off with an increasing slope of 20 decibels per decade. So what this first term tells you is that you have a zero at the origin. And then right here, the slope breaks and it breaks to go to a slope of zero decibels per decade. So when that corner breaks right there, that tells you that you have a pole at one radian per second. Now, one thing to note here is that 
A zero at the origin normally would cross zero decibels at one radian per second, but this one actually crosses at 40 decibels. So what that tells you that is that you have a gain 20 log base 10 of K naught is equal to 40 decibels. So when you solve that for the static gain, you get that you have a static gain of K naught equal 100. So when we go to the next corner, it changes the slope from zero decibels per decade to negative 20 decibels per decade. So that tells you that you have a pole at five radians per second. And then finally, the slope breaks again here to become negative 40 decibels per decade. So that corner tells you that you have a pole at 20 radians per second. So based upon what we've observed on the plot, we can come up with the following amplitude plot. H of J omega is equal to 100 times the zero at the origin, J omega, divided by the three poles that we found, which were one plus J omega over one times one plus J omega over five times one plus J omega over 20. So then we can use algebra to rearrange this expression. By multiplying the numerator and denominator by 100, we get 10K times S over S plus one times S plus five times S plus 20. For the following Bode amplitude plot, compute the transfer function h of s in the form k times s plus z1 times s plus z2 and so on, divided by s plus p1 times s plus p2 and so on. So once again, we observe that the plot starts at 20 decibels, a horizontal line. This tells us that we have a k naught term, otherwise it would have started at zero decibels. So the first thing we're going to have is that we have a gain 20 log base 10 of k naught is equal to 20 decibels. So k naught is equal to 10. Then we have a corner right here where the slope breaks and begins to rise with 20 decibels per decade. That means we have a simple zero at two radians per second. Then the slope breaks right here and becomes horizontal. So that corner tells us that we have a pole at 20 radians per second. And then the slope breaks again at this corner and becomes negative 20 decibels per decade. So that corner tells us that we have a pole at 100 radians per second. So writing down the information that we've observed, we have H of J omega is equal to 10 times the zero at two radians per second, one plus J omega over two, divided by the two poles, one of them was at 20 radians per second, one plus J omega over 20. The other one was at 100 radians per second, one plus J omega over 100. So in order to write this in form of H of S, we would multiply the numerator and denominator by two times 20 times 100. And we would end up with 10K times S plus two over S plus 20 times S plus 100. This concludes today's lecture on using Bode diagrams. And what you should notice here is that the output of the system is influenced by the frequency characteristics of the transfer function. And this motivates our next two lectures on filters.